Hello and welcome to another episode of the Alpha Labs and we have quite the setup this time. Um, I am trying to demo you the influence of a network on the clock in a streamer. And we tried to do this before and I think we succeeded in that but I'm, I'm going to show you live right now how this actually works. Um, we picked a Volumio Primo streamer, it's a streamer with a DAC and the DAC is clocked of course and I'm going to measure the clock that actually clocks the DAC. And it's not a bad clock in this uh, streamer, it's around 9 picoseconds, 9 or 10 picoseconds of jitter. It's pretty good if, I, if you take into account that we measure with a probe and the probe uh, runs through a uh, buffer amp or step up amp. Uh, that makes from 1 mega ohm 50 ohms that feeds the wave crest and that's what you see on screen so this is our wave crest um, um, jitter measurement system it's actually a signal integrity uh, analyzer but uh, in this case it's just measuring jitter and phase noise the primo is fed with its stock power supply and it's in the uh, AC generator. I'm not going to use it for extra noise this time but I want to have a clean feed of power into this adapter um, to make it more honest uh, so to say. Uh, this is our electronic load. It's connected to a switch mode power supply that we're going to use later and we see a current probe right here uh, and the Ethernet cable runs through it, but I'm going to use it to inject noise later. And this cable goes into our CDN, uh, it's a coupling decoupling network for the network, to analyze common mode noise on the Ethernet cable. And as you can see, it's not really clean. I'm measuring from uh, 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz right now. And yeah, it's not a really clean feed, but this is a well, it's an 800 euro streamer with a stock power supply and it, this is actually all power supply noise. Let's do our baseline measurement. Okay, it's going down, yeah. And see what happens. 131.918, around 9.3 picoseconds. And let's do a quick phase noise measurement. Know that it can fluctuate a little bit. That's why we do a lot of measurements when we measure jitter, just to be sure. But yeah, it, it, it's really hard to do a static measurement of jitter because jitter actually fluctuates. And uh, it will go up and down a little bit, but it should be in a certain bandwidth. Well, this, this looks about right. 131 of total jitter and uh, 9.3 average. Well, total jitter is a accumulation of all the jitter, like bounded peak-to-peak -peak jitter, unbounded or RMS jitter, periodic jitter, deterministic jitter, uh, inter-symbol interference jitter. Everything is bounded in is combined in this. But let's take a look at the average jitter in this case and look at the total jitter to get an get an understanding of what's going up and down. Well, minus 40. Now I'm gonna inject some noise. So I'm gonna place this uh, adapter next to the cable and I'm gonna load it. And I'm gonna inject some white noise to uh, I don't know, emulate some Wi-Fi or uh, fields of distortion from other equipment uh, next to the cable. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna check it out. Whoo! Now it's 150. So we went from 130 something to 150 picoseconds and 10.8 average. So this is just distortion from the power brick and the white noise that I'm injecting with the current probe. So let's see what happens to the phase noise. We, was, we, we, we were on 140 or something, uh, sorry, minus 40. 
sounds about right and we can I mean uh, there are switches that have yeah minus 32 so we went down eight decibels of phase noise lower is better so this is more up to the zero reference line uh, so we went down eight decibels and this is not an unrealistic situation because a lot of people use unshielded network cables that's why we always say please use shielded cable uh, to eliminate this influence I mean this is all external noise sources but I can show you what happens when we attach a bad switch I have a switch right here which is pretty noisy but it's not as bad as this so I suspect it will be a little bit lower the noise than what we have right now and of course I'm gonna switch this off to uh, eliminate that noise it looks worse but I think these spikes and the field that the power supply creates is actually worse and I'm measuring at the CDN right now so it's not the um, yeah well it, yeah you could compare it by the way because the other one was also in the CDN but yeah it's 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 a bad switch you can see that let's see what happens 147 so it's pretty comparable <laughs> to the <laughs> bad uh, power brick next to the um, next to the power supply yeah so okay. Uh, let's check the phase noise. I think it will be a little bit better uh, But you can see we went from around 130 and 9.3 to 10.5 So that's 1.2 picoseconds. That's 1% No, 10% sorry 10% difference between a clean isolated uh, situation to a dirty switch or power brick next to an unshielded cable and this is a clock that actually clocks the DAC. Yeah, minus 37. So it's a little bit better. A phase noise is, um, yeah, well, it's still 3 dB worse than the other situation. And like I said, it fluctuates a little bit. It's consequently higher and lower in every situation. So, um, so what can we conclude? We went from a total jitter of around 130 or 35, I'm not sure, and 9.3 picoseconds of average jitter to almost 11. And now it's 10.6 and a phase noise of mon minus 40 dB and I'm measuring at the clock with a cable and a step up uh, or, or a buffer amp for the uh, 50 ohm load so this is not really realistic minus minus 40 and minus 37 I think it will be better if I actually couple it directly to the clock the the machine but that's not possible so we went from minus 40 to minus uh, 30 something and now minus 37. So minus 32, I think it was 8 dBs. So the phase noise is worse and the jitter is worse when I inject noise or attach it to a pretty bad switch. So I hope this will give you some proof that switches do matter and it's measurable. Um, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.